Hello, everybody. It's Sephiroth 1204. Hey, guys. Banner vs. Conquer here. Okay, so we have a little bit of a different video to talk to you about today. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's the 20 year anniversary of the Super Nintendo, and we're making a tribute for it. Yay. That's right. Super Nintendo is almost as old as I am. Well, the Super Famicom is. Stupid Super Famicom. How dare they not come to America? And how dare they not give us the more colorful controllers it had? Yeah, I always like that. Yeah, I mean, didn't you see the controller in the Japanese version? It was good how, stuff. How they, how they have the yellow, red, blue, and green. Yeah. Sigh. Yeah, and we just get purple. Well, you know, purple is a nice color. Yeah, but I like having more colors. You know, and... You're, yeah, you're very purpose? racially tolerant. Now let's move on. So, <sighs> Super Nintendo was, it was awesome. It was released in August 13th, 1991 in North America. Thank you, Mr. Wikipedia. <laughs> it, I, I found that on GameFAQs. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. GameFAQs. So the first game released for the Super Nintendo was technically Super Mario World. And F-Zero. And F-Zero. We're talking about Super Mario World here, though. It was also released, the system was also released in Japan as the Super Famicom, November 21st, 1990. Yes, a day that shall live in infamy. It was also released in Europe on April 11th, 1992. It also had yeah. a smaller version released in October 1997. Yeah, that and, was the refurbished version. And there was another refurbished one in Japan called the Super Famicom Jr. Really released March 27th, 1998. It's like the Game Boy Advance Mini. <laughs> and several years after that exact date, the 3DS would come out in America. So, Super Mario World was one of those awesome things that introduced yeah. Yoshi. And it introduced Mario into the 16-bit era. That's right. It's a glorious era. And then, 1992. We got one of the greatest games ever made. Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Yes. Came out April 13th, 1992. It's definitely one of the most beautifully done 2D Zelda games I've ever seen. Nowadays, Ocarina of Time feels like a 3D version of it. Yep. It was a great story, some great items. But let's go back to 1991. We also got a game known as Final Fantasy II. That's right, Final Fantasy Re Released II. November 23rd, 1991. And it was Final Fantasy 2 for us, but in Japan it was Final Fantasy 4. Yeah. That's the game with uh, with Cecil and all those Repskillions. And when you mean only Japan, that was another... That was one problem with the Super Nintendo, is that there were a lot of great games that never saw America. They were only in, only in Japan. Yep. It's very unfortunate. And we didn't get the final game for the Super Nintendo, which I think we'll talk about later. Yeah, we'll talk about the end of the discussion. Uh, some awesome franchises spawned out of the Super Nintendo. You know, we got, uh, obviously we got, uh, you know, stuff for the Mario games. We got the Yoshi games, uh, started with, uh, Yoshi's, uh, Island. Yeah. We got, uh... I mean, Legend of Zelda went further. We got Donkey Kong Country. Oh, uh, the greatest 16-bit game ever. Yeah, that game was 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 amazing. I I remember uh, when I was a kid in my orthodontist's office, way back when he had all the systems. I used to play the Super Nintendo there, and I would play games like Donkey Kong Country. There was a oh yeah, Doctor. I think I remember having something that Nintendo sent me explaining that. What? They, they, I remember I once sent them a message, you know, and they gave me back something that, you know, tells me the history of Nintendo, and they said they had Super Nintendos in hospitals. Yeah. I mean, and, it's really, it's a really great way to, uh, distract And by the yourself. way, Don Kong Country was released November 25th, 1994. Very nice. 1994 is a good year. Made by Rareware. Yeah. Before they sucked. Before they defected over to Microsoft. And became the Activision of this generation. <laughs> I love how you keep on using that. Um, 
yeah, Rareware made a lot of awesome stuff, but another game that has made popular recently was Earthbound. Mm. I have oh, to bring that Earthbound. up. Earthbound, very, very influential game. That game influential changed game. my gaming experience. Yeah, very influential game a lot of people, such as It was myself. released in Japan, August 27th, 1994. It was released in America, June 5th, 1995. Yeah, unfortunately, as it as it is now, it's not going to be re-released because of stupid copyright issues. And I actually do believe it's it's in the Japanese Virtual Console. Damn it! Uh, and also, let's go back to 1994. 1994. One of the most amazingest games, amazing. one of the greatest 2D platformers or exploration games amazing. ever created. Super Metroid. Yes. It was released in Japan, March 19th, 1994, April 18th, 1994. Super Metroid, that was an amazing game. It... And we can't, and we go, let's go back to Donkey Kong Country. We can't forget about its sequels. Yeah, the... It was released, released in Japan, November 21st, 1995, and December 1995 in US. Donkey Kong Country 2? Yeah. Yeah, Diddy Kong's Quest. I've actually never played two or three. Yeah, and let's t I'll talk about the sequel to that game as well. What, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble something? Yep, it came out in US in November 1996. Yeah, and another, another game that uh, that I don't know how many people here have actually played, but uh, came out in the Super Nintendo Earthworm Jim. Oh uh, yeah, wasn't that also on the G Genesis? Yeah, I think it was. Earthworm Jim no, was hilarious. It was so weird. And also, let's talk about yeah, when we were talking about thing. when we were talking about sequels. We can't forget Super Mario World 2. Oh, yeah, that's Yoshi. Yoshi's Island. That was an awesome game, right there. It came out in Japan August 5th, 1995, October 4th, 1995, in in America. Yeah, uh, I love Yoshi so much. I love just making all the sounds like Yoshi. Things Yoshi. Like... No, no, no. Yoshi. Yeah. And, and you know what? Sound of his and Earthbound's an RPG, right? Yeah. Super Nintendo also showed that the world's greatest video game character can also be in an RPG. <laughs> you know who my, what I'm thinking of? Um... Super Mario RPG. Oh, of course. Super Mario RPG. It came out in Japan March 9th, 1996. Uh, May 13th, 1996 in America. That game was that game was amazing. Aside from the fact that it was made by uh, Square, SquareSoft. Well, obviously it's an awesome RPG. Before SquareSoft sucked. Yeah, before they before they left Nintendo. It's quite unfortunate. Originally, actually, I believe that uh, Paper Mario was also supposed to be done by Square until they left, and then they gave all the uh, stuff to Intelligent Systems. And honestly, I just. Mario RPG, in my opinion, is much better. And why are we even talking about Paper Mario? Because it's, it was almost made by Square. And yeah, we're talking about the N64. We gotta go back to the Super Nintendo, damn it. <laughs> well, Super Mario RPG has amazing gameplay. It's uh, one of those games I really like because it has an interactive battle system. It's not just, you know, you select an attack, but you can do, like, uh, you know, the timing on attacks and things like that. The music yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. Da, 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 well, yeah, that's, that's the most famous, da, 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 all, the, all the music in the game. Same man. with Yoshi's Island, actually. I really love this the, the music of the 16-bit games. Yeah, it was much better than that crappy sound that Genesis gave. <laughs> oh, the Genesis. And let's, why don't we go back to Final Fantasy? Let's talk about Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 3. That was, a, that was another great game, Final Fantasy 3. Which was really Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, but we don't like talking about that. Much. It came out in Japan April 2nd, 1994, and in America Og o October 20th, 1994. Yeah, Final Fantasy III was one of those games that was really driven by the story. It was really, really unbelievable. That's the one that has uh, Edgar and Sabin and all those people. It's another you know, thing, actually. They had a nice, uh, with the battle system, the, uh, some of the stuff was a bit interactive, like Sabin's... Uh, um, special attacks and stuff like that. And we can't forget about another Squaresoft RPG, Secret of Mana. Secret of Mana. I've actually never played Secret of Mana, believe it or not. It's on the Virtual Console. 
Yeah, I know, but I don't have money. You can't, you can't even find eight bucks. Nope, not at all. It was released in Japan August 6, 1993, and America October 1993. Another, another great RPG that we really can't bypass. Oh, I'll say it. <laughs> Chrono Trigger. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's what I like the most about Chrono Trigger. The fact that it was also a very awesome game made by Square. It was re released in Japan March 11th, 1995, and released in America in August 1995. Mm. At the time, summer 1995, Earthbound was also out. Yep. So these two are pretty much like these two games were pretty much rivals. Uh, as a, but it's an awesome rivalry. But one thing that Music pisses is me awesome. off about Chrono Trigger the art style. One of them that pissed me off about the game. What? The How PS1 they were... version? <laughs> Besides that, <laughs> when I finally got the PS1 version, a little while after that, Square decides to put the game on the virtual console. <laughs> after all the trouble I get of trying to find it on the PS1, and I realize that the PS1 version sucks. Yep. Yes, it does. Stupid load times. God. But yeah. I love the art style in Chrono Trigger by uh, the same person who did uh, Dragon Ball series, um, Akira Toriyama. Yeah. What other great games can we talk about? Uh, Final Fantasy V? Well, that was only in Japan. There's a, a, I don't know how many people out there uh, played this, but it was a great game called Breath of Fire. Yeah. It was actually, and I really liked it as an RPG. A lot of people say that there's not, like, that the character development isn't that great, but, uh, I don't know. I think it was a really solid, uh, solid game. Uh, also a game I remember playing a lot was called Batman Returns. Hmm, <laughs> Batman Returns. For the Super Nintendo. It came out on, let's see, Europe not 1993, Japan February 26, 1993, and for America April 1993. It was a good game. It was actually one of the very few games that that was based on a movie that actually turned out really well. Oh, and also another great beat 'em up game. So you know, Batman Returns was a beat 'em up. Another great beat 'em up beat 'em up we have to mention is Teenage Mutant it's... Ninja Turtles 4. Yes, yes, that that Turtles game. Time. That game was amazing. That game. It was uh, it was an arcade game, but I think they did a really good job on actually you know putting it onto the. Uh, putting onto the Super Nintendo. I used to play that all the time at my cousin's house. It came out July 24th, 1992 in Japan, it came out in US in August 1992, and for Europe, November 19th, 1992. Yeah. It had the, the uh, it was one of the very few games that actually updated itself from the arcade version. And uh, it included extra levels and bosses and stuff. But it lacked four players. It lacked four players. And speaking of four players, wasn't there an add-on for the Super Nintendo that let you have four players? Yeah, it's called the Super Link. Next yeah. interesting. Speaking of the Super Link, what game supported it? Um. Well, I think Secret of Mana did. Yeah, there were certain games, Secret of Mana, uh, some sports games like NBA Sports Jam, uh, a few games. Not, I mean, there weren't that many games that were four-player-ish. I mean, most most games that were that were uh, supported multiple players were stuff like Street Fighter, you know, where it's just how, two players. How about we talk about Final Fight? Final Fight. <laughs> nah. No, no, not not my type of game. But you can talk about it. Nah, I don't. I haven't played it either. Why don't we talk about some games that were only in Japan? Well, I I'm not only in Japan, so I don't really know from such games. Well, I'm just, I'm not gonna, like, talk about them, but I can... You but can I know mention, them. mention them. Which, this game, I obviously have to mention Fire Emblem. Ah, uh, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Monsu no Nazo. Yeah, yeah, that, it that's released, it. Too. It was released in Japan, uh, uh, January 21st, 1994, and I believe it was a remake of the NES Fire Emblem. But we eventually got on the DS called Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Yep. And another Fire Emblem game. Fire Emblem Tyrus 776. <laughs> Very creative names they have. It was released released only in Japan January 21st, 2000. 
2000? Yeah. For the Super Nintendo? For the Super Famicom. Oh, for the Super Famicom, I mean? Wow. Yeah. That's, uh... That's interesting. Let's see, some other games I want in Japan, uh... A game that I've been wanting to LP, but I'm having trouble. <laughs> Dorami Fantasy. I don't know, it's, I think your Hapag just doesn't like systems that are old, younger than I am, or older than I am. Or... A piece of crap! <laughs> piece of crap. Well, what about the N64? Well, go back to Super Nintendo, where you talk about the Super Nintendo. Hey, it's the Super Nintendo. So Super Nintendo had some awesome peripherals. Uh, we mentioned Super Link. Uh, there was also the, uh, the Super Nintendo Mouse, which was used for games like uh, Mario, Mario Paint. Paint. And the uh, Satel View only in Japan. Yeah, and uh, also games an, Super Nintendo. Uh, it was an port. online service add-on. That's cool. And also uh, Super Nintendo ports like Doom. Uh, yeah, Doom. So yeah, the mouse is pretty interesting, and it's actually made the uh, you know a lot of people use uh, emulated uh, Mario Paint stuff to make music and pictures nowadays, and it's a lot easier because it was supposed to be on a mouse in the first place. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of people actually do a lot of homebrew on the Super Nintendo. What do you mean? Homebrew, I guess, I believe, like, still make games for it, but, like, you know, unofficial companies. It's interesting. But just, you know, online, I guess, I believe. Yeah. I mean, you've seen, you know, if you, if you take a look at the, uh, the Super Mario ROM hacks, you know, it's all based, yeah. pretty much all based on Super Mario World. And we all forced Proton John to do them. <laughs> But anyway, let's. Speaking of those add-ons for Super oh, yeah, Nintendo, we were the talking about super earlier. Super Scope. Yeah. The Super Scope for games like Yoshi Safari. I think that thing costed like six AA batteries. Yeah. How many of and us? It, I, how many people out there first saw the Super Scope when it was in Super Smash Bros. Melee? Tell me. Post a comment down below. Yeah, please. I mean, I I have to admit, I am one of them. I had never heard of the me, Super Scope before. Too. Yeah, and also, speaking of add-ons, how about the FX chip? <laughs> Super FX chip put, found in some cartridges. Like... Star Fox. Star Fox! Yeah. The original game... Star Fox, in all its polygonal glory. Sure, that game might look horrible now, but at the time... Yeah, at the time it was pretty good. Then there was Star Fox 64. But then... But we're not talking game... about that. But then... The game. It's a Star Fox game that never saw the light of day. Star Fox 2. <sighs> if you want to play Star Fox 2, it's found on online on some emulators or some ROMs. I mean. You ever play it? <coughs> no. Me neither. Oh, why don't we talk about Street Fighter? We'll fight you on the side of the street. Oh, wait, no, wrong. Okay, we had Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, <laughs> Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior. I like how they keep on adding the names onto everything. <laughs> that's oh, wait, that's making Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, I don't think that game exists. No, it, it does. Or Street Fighter Alpha 2. Uh, Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers. Yeah. So pretty much, Street Fighter 2 was a success, and they just kept on adding things year after year to it, and calling it, adding speaking another... Of, speaking of Street Fighter 2, it was the only... The Super Nintendo was the only 16-bit system to get that game. Street Fighter Alpha 2 was also on the PlayStation, Saturn, PC, and Arcade. Interesting. So yeah, the Super Nintendo was the only 16-bit machine to get that game. Yeah! Well, it's because the Super Nintendo was the best. Mega Man X, let's talk about that. Ah! Oh! Mega Man X. That was just, that's one of the best Mega Man games ever. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was different. It was, it was released December 17th, 1993 in, in Japan, in America, January 1994. I don't, think I, I don't think I talked about releases in a while, for a while now. It's okay, we'll forgive you. Oh, also a game called oh, Demon's Crest. I don't think I've heard of that one, actually. It's an enemy from Ghosts and Goblins with his own game. That's weird. Ghosts and Goblins. 
Uh, there was also a ga Super Nintendo game called Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, that's right. That's right. Is that the one that was impossible, or was the original one the one that was impossible? I think it was the NES one. The unreleased blind... The unreleased gameplay video I made of it. Which... <laughs> Which didn't come out well because of that pog. Yeah. Stupid, stupid pog. How about Mega Man X2? NX3? It yeah. became a whole franchise. No, how about Mega Man 7? There's a whole load of Mega Man games, actually. There was uh, some nice remakes also, like Super Mario All-Stars. Oh, uh, yeah. And... Which included Super Mario Bros. 2, a.k.a. The Lost Levels. And what about the... A fighting game that got really criticized on the Super Nintendo, Mortal Kombat. And Mortal Kombat. Back the, when its graphics were not that great, and it was a lot of Super blood and violence. The Super Nintendo version got criticized a lot because it was censored. Hmm, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Sega like Genesis, Genesis though. Version. Sega Genesis was like, hey, bring on the death and destruction. And but in Mortal Kombat 2, it was fully uncensored. That time, the Super Nintendo won. Right. And I believe that the Super Nintendo had also Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. I don't know. Yep, it did. Harvest Moon. Oh, Harvest Moon. I love Harvest Moon. Hmm. Harvest Moon, that was, I believe it was one of the last Super Nintendo games. It came out in 1997. Yeah. Hmm. There are... The Harvest Moon series, I kind of have a mixed feeling on it. Like, some games on the series are, like, really good, but some, there are some that are just absolute crap. Well, I like, actually have never played it, so I can't argue one I have way or the other. on the Virtual Console. It's also Kirby Superstar. Oh, yeah, and what about Kirby Dream Land 3? Dream Land 3, very nice. That was, like, I believe the last game Nintendo made for the system. It's unfortunate. It's a great Kirby, system. Kirby Dream Course, Kirby's Avalanche. Hmm. Of course, we can't uh, we can't talk about the Super Nintendo without also talking about Sega Genesis. Ah, uh, yeah, that biggest was... gaming rivalry. The Civil War, video game style. Back... You could only be on one side. Back when you weren't allowed to have both systems. It's like you're if you have a Super Nintendo, you're on Nintendo side. You have a Genesis, you're on Sega's side. You you couldn't have both systems. No, that would be blasphemy. It was one of the biggest video game wars with both systems, pretty much Mario vs. Sonic, trying to yeah. outdo the other. Remember when the Genesis was always going, Genesis does! <laughs> Genesis does, when Nintendo don't. <laughs> really? It really Nintendo. brought out the best in both systems, though. Remember what the Nintendo is with Genesis and... <laughs> but let me just say, the Genesis does when Nintendo don't. And then the Super Nintendo came out, and it was pretty much a 16-bit system that was pretty much better in every single entire aspect. Yep. Better graphics, better games, better sound, especially sound. Especially sound, definitely. Listen to Super Metroid and Earthbound's music. Ah, uh, Earthbound. Da, like, da, 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 da. I know in Super Metroid, I always go into that Red Brinster place and listen to that music all day. Remember Donkey Kong Country soundtrack? Remember those water levels? They were all awesome. Those water levels, that music was so peaceful. Yeah. One of my favorite tracks from Earthbound is the, uh, the Threed music. Yeah, and... <laughs> Mr. Saturn's. This is a great game. Yeah. And Earthbound. of course, who won the war? Let me see, but... During... At the time during the war, both consoles really could not get higher or lower. They were pretty much most of the time even. Okay. Eventually, though. It's like, neither console could maintain a defensive lead in the market share for several years. But then, in the end, who won the battle? Who do you think? Nintendo. Yeah. Let's see, uh... I think it was, what was it, 23 million consoles versus 20 million or something? Yeah, but nowadays I think the Super Nintendo has 49 million something. Okay, yeah, it has 40. As of now, it has 49.10 million units sold. Yeah, so let me let me ask the people out there, what was your favorite uh, Super Nintendo game? 
And which console did you prefer? Yeah, who, which side of the, the war were you on? Were you on Nintendo side or were you on Sega side? Were you on Nintendo side or the losing side? Which do you think had the better controller? I, I never really liked the Genesis controller. I mean, I know it's very overrated. It scared me. Speaking of, when we talk about how the Super Nintendo had better graphics, it also had Mode 7. Go on. You know about Mode 7? I do, but I can't explain it. Very bad. I know games like Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger supported it. Go on. People just go on Wikipedia to find out. <laughs> and why don't we talk about the Super Game Boy? Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot about that Super Game Boy. I remember having so much good memories playing Pokemon Red on that. Yeah, that was really, that was really great. Like, just, you have this awesome feeling if you just play Pokemon Red with that thing. <laughs> or even Pokemon Blue. <laughs> it's the same game. But when this war with the Super Nintendo and Genesis, they both shared the final game. The last game released for the systems in America. In America. This is not Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridged. <laughs> was Frogger. Oh, Frogger. But the port for the Super Nintendo and Genesis was absolutely horrible. It was a terrible game. It was a great way to end off the system. <laughs> it was released no for both systems November 1998. November 1998. It was already when Ocarina of Time Ocarina was out of time then. Was out. So the chances this game sold were probably under a thousand copies. Wah, wah. That's just a guess. Who knows? But that wasn't the Super Nintendo's final, final game. The last game released for it was Metal Slatter Glory Director's Cut. It was released in, oh my god, November 29, 2000. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, technically also in a Nintendo Power Edition, December 1st, 2000. Now, at the very end of 2000, the PlayStation 2 was already out. <laughs> yeah, the GameCube was on its way. And the, the PlayStation 2 was even out in America. <laughs> yeah, it was released everywhere in the world at the time this, this Super Nintendo's last game came out. That was pretty funny. In the end, Super Nintendo had a long life. A very long life. Long and prosperous one. It's the last game since it was released in 1990 in Japan and ended in 2000. It had a good 10 year life. And well... well I think this video is running on a bit long. Yep, so... so I Wait. hope you guys had a fun trip down memory lane if you have and, uh, played any and, of these things. And tell us, what were yours? What were some games you remember? You know, what games you remember, favorite memories, favorite soundtracks, stuff like that. And if some Japanese people who know English are watching this, <laughs> tell us what games did you own that we never had, like the Final Fantasy games. Or Seiken Densetsu 3. Oh yeah, <laughs> that game, we forgot to mention that. Yeah, it's okay. And tell us if, if you have played Metal Slider Director's Cut. <laughs> so anyway, I am Sephiroth Volvo 4. And I am Banjo vs. Conquer. And we thank and, you for joining us. And happy anniversary, Super Nintendo. Happy anniversary. Congratulations, you're now 20 years old. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.